Thanks, buds. Today we're going to be doing a basic mashed potato and gravy recipe. The gravy is going to use the roux that we've already know how to make, so we're just going to, we need something to go with it. So let's do some mashed potatoes, right? Spuds love their mashed potatoes. So anyway, I'm going to start with, um, recipe says two pounds of baking potatoes. So these are russet potatoes. They're about, they're, they're kind of your cheapest potato. Um, and I'm going to use these and I've got a pot of water going. And I've kind of overfilled it because I know I need two and a half cups of boiling water for my gravy, and that's to help dissolve my um, chicken and beef base that's going to go in there. So I have a little bit of extra water in here. But I've rinsed my potatoes in cold water, and then I'm just going to start peeling them. And I just peel in long strips. If you're using like a red potato or a different style of potato that has like a thinner skin, you don't have to take the peels off. I mean, and you could leave the peels on the russets if you want to. Some people really like the potato skins. Not everybody does, but for mashed potatoes, typically I like to remove the skin. So I'm going to get my potatoes peeled up. If there's any bad spots in my potatoes, I can just cut it out. If your potatoes are green, that potato is no good and you need to just get a whole new potato. If there's still a little bit on here, it's not too big of a deal. So, but notice I'm not doing like this thing because it's kind of inefficient. So I just do long, um, long peels with my peeler. I've got my thumb kind of on the end helping me and it goes a lot quicker, a lot more efficient and you lose a lot less potato. Like I'm getting just the skin right now versus if I was doing all those short choppy fast strokes, you can leave a lot of potato behind. And then there's kind of like a gross spot here. So I'm gonna, I'll make sure when I cut, I can get that off or I'm just gonna peel a little extra and get that. So do that with all your potatoes. And then I'm just gonna quarter these potatoes up. I don't need to dice them or julienne or anything there. Um, but you kind of want them in even-ish size pieces so that they cook evenly. But you don't wanna dice them up and try to boil them because it's too small and you might think, oh, well, it would be faster for the boiling process, but really it ends up being where the potato is too small and you end up with all the starch kind of leaving the potato and you don't really have much left for your mashed potato. So you just end up quartering these and then they simmer or they, yeah, simmer boil for about 15 minutes. As soon as I get these peeled, I'm gonna rinse them off one more time because there is a little bit of that skin kind of stuff and they get kind of, um, they get kind of gross. You can also, if you don't have a potato peeler, you can definitely use a paring knife to peel your potatoes and you kind of do the same process. And notice I peeled them right into my scrap bowl so they're not like on a baking sheet or something. So now I'm going to give them one more quick rinse. I'm using cold water. And then I'm just going to cut these. I'm going to quarter them up. And actually I'm going to Go one more on these. So cut them in half and then I cut them into quarters. I guess that makes some what, one eighth, right? I don't know, not a math teacher. You don't need fractions, right? I mean, you only use them every day in cooking. Um, generally I use about a potato per person. So if I'm making this for four people, I'll use four potatoes. If there's just two of you, you'd could definitely do just two potatoes, unless you really, really like mashed potatoes. I mean, they're pretty good reheated too, so you can always do stuff with your leftovers. And this is just a basic mashed potato recipe. You can do some add-ins if you wanted, and I'll get to that kind of when we get to that point. So I'm gonna put all my potatoes in this bowl. And we're just kind of waiting for this water to come to a boil. And I do have a, a two, two cup liquid measuring cup. And 
I'm also going to need a one cup because I need two and a half cups of that boiling water, or two and a quarter cups, I'm sorry, of the boiling water for my gravy. So for my gravy, it says to use chicken base and beef base. And you can also, or you can use like the little bouillon cubes. Um, the bouillon cubes are kind of hard, so make sure you smash it. And you definitely want to use the boiling water. Um, so if you're using this style of bouillon that's like in the powder form, you want to use two teaspoons. But if you're using the cubes, it's just one cube. So there'll be two teaspoons of the beef and then two more teaspoons of the chicken. I like having these powders on hand because it makes it really nice for like recipes like this where you're kind of wanting to have a lot of flavor infused in it. So my water's starting to boil. I'm going to grab some water out of it, kind of get it mixed in here with this guy. So I'll put this to the one cup mark. And then that means I need a cup and a quarter in here. So we need a little extra. And there's a cup and a quarter. So I'm kind of going to mix these two together now. It'll all pretty much fit in this two cup. And I just needed the other cup to kind of get it measured right. And you can see how that stock is kind of dissolved in there pretty quick. So this is going to be for my gravy. And now that my water is close to boiling, I should have put a lid on here. It would have made it boil a lot quicker. But this burner does go pretty quick on this. So I'm going to get the rest of the stuff I need for my gravy together while I wait on this water to come to a boil. All right, my water's got a good boil going to it now. Um, whenever I cook potatoes, I always want to salt my water a bit too. So right before I throw, I'm just going to grab a pinch of salt, throw it in here. And I'm going to gently put my potatoes in. And then I've got the burner on high, so you might turn it down like just a little bit because you don't want it to bubble over a whole bunch. Um, it will, but you'll know a little bit once you kind of get it um, well, it'll come back up to a blow. I'm actually going to move this to my stove top now so that I can get started on the gravy. So these are going to go uncovered for 15 minutes. I'm going to set a timer. And again, like my high setting is at a high, so I, I may find I need to turn it down to like an eight or something. But it's pretty common for potatoes to kind of bubble up a little bit boil over just a little bit. Okay, so now for my gravy, I'm going to take a quarter cup of butter and melt that in a medium saucepan. I've already got my stock, my two and a quarter cups. And so I'm going to get this butter and I'm on medium heat. A lot of times I do make gravy in a frying pan. If you've got a nice tall sided frying pan, you can definitely make your gravy in that. But this recipe says use a saucepan, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I have a quarter cup of flour. I've got some onion powder and some salt and pepper ready to go. So as soon as this butter gets melted, we can go ahead and add those other goodies in here. And then I also need a whisk for making my roux. Gravy is pretty much your roux and then some kind of flavored stock, whether it's chicken or beef. Um, a lot of times the fat used in a gravy, instead of it being butter, a lot of times it's whatever you've already made. So if I had made um, sausage, then I would reserve the fat from that sausage and that would be the fat for my roux. But in this case, I haven't made any of those, any kind of meat. So I'm going to use um, the stock, the, just the granules and, and make my own. So my butter has melted and I'm going to add my flour, quarter cup of flour. I'm going to add my onion powder and then we got just a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, your stock that you, so the stuff that we made, it 
it's going to be a little salty, so I'm going to not go too much salt right yet. But we're going to get this stirred around, get our roux going here. Again, a roux equal parts fat and flour. It does not have to be butter. In this case, we're using butter. But, you know, if you had some kind of pork fat or some other leftover fat from something maybe that you'd made, that would work just fine. You could absolutely sub that out instead of butter. If you wanted this to not be, you know, dairy free, you could definitely use vegetable oil or any, any kind of fat would work with it. So we don't really want this roux to get real brown. We just want to get that flour taste kind of cooked out of there. And now I'm going to add about half of this stock. And because this water is already hot, you know, we had it pretty much boiling, um, this is gonna thicken really fast. If it was a um, cold water, it wouldn't thicken nearly as fast. You can see it's kind of already got into one little blob right there. So now that that's incorporated, I'm gonna add the other half-ish of it in, uh, maybe two thirds of it. And get that kind of mixed in. And if you don't have beef stock and chicken stock at home, just pick one and it's just going to have, you know, that main flavor in there versus both flavors. And now I can go ahead and add the rest of it in. And then we just kind of let it get back up to where we start to see a bubble or two in it. And then our gravy's done. So it's pretty quick. And we're basically just kind of waiting on our potatoes. I am going to do a quick sample. Except for I don't know where my taster spoons went. And I sampled kind of before it gets too, uh, too much bubbles going in there so you don't burn the heck out of your mouth. Tastes pretty good. It does, it is a little salty. So I'm definitely not gonna add any more salt to it, but I do wanna add, for my taste, a little bit more pepper. As you can see, it, it's got a pretty good bubbles and boil going, so it's you want to be whisking it constantly while it's doing that. Check the flavor again. I'm gonna let it cool though, because it's gonna probably burn my mouth pretty good with it being bubbling and boiling. Yeah, that pepper really helps offset some of that saltiness. All right, so gravy's done. We're just waiting on these potatoes and they've got about 10 more minutes. So I'm gonna turn the gravy down to low just to keep it warm. If it gets cold, it's gonna thicken and get like gelatinous and I don't want it to do that. So I'm just gonna turn it down to low and wait for these potatoes to finish cooking. All right, so the timer just went off of my potatoes. I'm gonna test them and you just kinda of wanna make sure that they are fork tender. My water got cloudy. That's all the starch in here. I can pierce them easy with a fork, so these guys are done. To drain them, you can use a colander, but what I like to do is take your lid, and it's just cracked a little bit, like right here. Hold it with your thumbs. And the lid wasn't on here, so it's not hot. And I'm going to dump this water out. A lot of people like to save this potato water and use it to, as their water for making their gravy. It'll get things extra thick because of all the starch and stuff in there. But we went ahead and did ours beforehand. So this pan is still nice and warm, and I'm going to add my butter in here right now. Um, the recipe, you know, it has two tablespoons of butter and one cup of milk. And you may find that that is, you want more butter or you want less milk. And that is totally a preference thing. This is just a guide. I'm probably not going to use the whole one cup. Um, and I do like, I like mine pretty buttery, so I'm actually going to add two more tablespoons in here. But because this pan is hot and these potatoes are still hot, 
which is why I did not use a colander for this. I would have lost a lot of my heat and I would have lost a lot of the starch out of my potatoes. So, and these, you can see, I'm, I'm just using a potato masher and I'm gently kind of going through here. If you're having to like push really hard and these haven't broken up in like five or six mashes, they didn't bake, they didn't cook long enough. So that'll be a lot of work. So I'm getting this butter in here. I'm also gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. And it's just kind of to taste. Not much salt, because I know my gravy is a little on the salty side. So I've got my butter in here. And you can do add-ins to this. Like this would be the time where I might put some garlic powder if I wanted garlic mashed potatoes. Um, you could definitely put cheese. I know a lot of people use sour cream in their mashed potatoes. But so I'm gonna add about half of this milk right now. It just kind of depends on how creamy and stuff you want your potatoes. You can also use a hand mixer for this. That works pretty good, but if your potatoes are soft enough, it doesn't take that long to just use a potato masher real quick. So I'm kind of liking this consistency of these potatoes. I'm try a little sample. So that's good. I only used half a cup of milk and I used a quarter cup of butter. But again, it's kind of what you like. You can add more milk. It'll make them a little thinner, a little creamier. So. Now I can just take these guys, I'm going to go ahead and plate them up. Take some of my potatoes here. And when you're doing your potatoes, you can, you can use an ice cream scoop. You know, that's how the cafeteria did it when I was a kid. But, and I make a little well in the middle. Then I can go ahead and add some of my gravy. And the ladle's probably gonna work best for this. There's some gravy on there. And there you go, spuds. It's your mashed potatoes and gravy. KFC style gravy, but way, way, way better. Enjoy.